Our cartoon president, Showtime's newest fresh piece of garbage of an animated cartoon, just recently released its first episode on YouTube, and it was a nightmarish hellhole. From the very beginning, I was very skeptical towards the idea of this series. I couldn't help but wonder if this was just meant to bank on the anti-Trump bandwagon that has grown over the past year, and given how every celebrity and late night show host has been taking a dump on Donald Trump, a part of me suspected that this was going to come across as a little bit biased. Now before anyone starts projecting my political alliance in their heads, let me just make two things clear. Number one, I do not associate with any political group. Number two, me criticizing this cartoon is not equal to me defending or supporting Trump. I'd also like to add that I'm actually okay with politically driven shows, even if it leans towards one side. American Dad was a show that was basically designed to make fun of Republicans, but I still consider it a good show with funny, memorable, and enjoyable moments. I'm also not completely against the idea of a comedic portrayal of Mr. Trump here. One of my favorite aspects of the 21st season of South Park was the parody of Trump and how the show cleverly made fun of his behavior and people who defend him. Unfortunately, our cartoon president does not do anything right. The first major issue I had with it was how painfully incoherent and uninvesting it was. The first time I watched this, I legitimately did not know what the main conflict was, and I only identified it after 14 minutes. Watching the episode again, I managed to spot where the conflict was first established, and I think the reason why I couldn't initially identify it was because I misinterpreted it as a mere joke. Then again, not having 100% of approval ratings because someone rated the president a 9 is not exactly something that's supposed to leave me excited. Maybe if they had properly established that having 100% of approval ratings was an irrational desire that Trump had that's very impactful to him. It would have increased my investment, but unfortunately they didn't, at least not in a proper way. They just treated it as a joke, and the joke became the main conflict, which is not good writing. You can't treat every little conceptual element of the story as a mere joke, even if you're writing a comedy show. Even if we're dealing with the most surreal, over-the-top, and comedy-driven show, there needs to be something about the story that's kept grounded. And this extends to another problem with this episode, the main character. Trump is portrayed as this idiotic bigot with no sense of dignity, which, okay, fine, I'm okay with it, I guess, but there isn't a single shred of humanity in him. I know that him being an irredeemable asshole is part of the joke, and trust me, I love assholes protagonists as much as the next guy, but you need to incorporate a little bit of emotional empathy in him, especially if he's the main character who we're supposed to follow each week, and the funny thing is, they had the opportunity to do that, 18 minutes into the episode, and I thought we were going to have an emotionally touching moment with him, but then it was treated as a joke, because that's all the writers want. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't to say that Trump needs to be the most sympathetic character, but the thing is, if there's one thing I learned from the introductory segment of the episode, the series doesn't really want to humanize Trump. But here's why I don't think that's a good idea. Let's say that you're someone who strongly dislikes Trump because you don't think he's a good human being. Okay, sure. Now, let's look at an episode from Evil Con Carne called Scarred for Life. Now, usually Hector is the protagonist, but in this one, Reginald seems to play the role of the main character. In the very first minute, we see Scar being treated poorly by Hector, in which he wakes him up in the middle of the night in a violent way. We then witness Scar express frustration and hatred towards Hector and desire to murder him, and just like that, you manage to establish a conflict and goal for a character with different morals from you, but still empathetic enough to follow his struggles because they feel real. You don't even have to root for him, you just need to stay invested in his goals and emotional struggles. With this series, however, I could not take any struggle that Trump was facing seriously because of how they were not handled with enough seriousness. and. You know, I really don't like making assumptions about a writer's intent, and I will gladly admit my mistake if I happen to be wrong, but it almost feels like the writers were trying their best to emotionally distance themselves from Trump's character by demonizing him in a comedic way. Even Seth, who's one of the most obviously leftist creators I know, had the intelligence to incorporate some humanity in Stan Smith, a character who has shown to be misogynistic, homophobic, and exaggeratingly conservative. Now granted, he has grown over the years even if at times he repeats the same mistakes, but even in his early appearances there was still a shred of humanity in him. 
And I know some people might say that I'm making unfair comparisons since Stan is meant to become a better man by the end of each episode, while Trump is supposed to maintain a bigot and the butt of the joke. But the thing is, my issue isn't that Trump didn't learn anything. Even if in the episode Surrogate, Stan hadn't grown to be more accepting of a gay couple raising a family and instead maintained his homophobia, I still would have appreciated the effort they put to make Stan's distaste towards gay couples raising a family feel real and empathetic, regardless if you actually agree with him or not. And unfortunately, I don't see that in our cartoon president. Even a character like Sheldon Cooper, in which the episode centered on him, he faces some of the most ridiculous conflicts. I can still empathize with his struggles because they feel real to them, which is something that requires effort and just a little bit of seriousness, even if the situations you're writing are meant to be comedic. But getting back to my gripes with the overall flow, which I stupidly sidetracked, the episode really tried to add as much jokes and skits inspired by criticism thrown at Trump, which will not only become an incomprehensible mess if you're someone who doesn't pay attention to politics. I mean, I recognize some if not most of the references, but I wonder what will feel like to the people who don't pay that much attention to politics and to the people who will watch this in a few years. But not only that, but a lot of these jokes and skits feel almost uncontextualized. Now, the 21st season of South Park did something similar except better. They knew how to separate the references in individual episodes and as a result, they feel individually self-contained and appropriately implemented. This of course with disregard for Mr. Garrison's overall characterization because that's a whole different story. In this episode, however, their goal is to cram as much Trump jokes, with some of them being the most predictable, tiring, and sarcastically self-aware humor that feels like a dried out Simpsons style humor. And lastly, before I watched this episode, I kept wondering, hmm, I wonder if this is going to have asinine animation much like every other Western adult cartoon. And boy was I not wrong, I really can't stand the cheap puppeteer with the robotic movements of the characters which unintentionally make the lip syncing look artificial. The character designs are inspired by one panel political cartoons in which they comically exaggerate the facial and body features of the political figures which I can sort of appreciate the artistic meaning but it also makes the character designs look ugly as sin. There's also this thing where the background imagery looks almost naturally drawn while the character layers look obviously digitally animated probably with something similar to what people refer to as Flash, and the distinction is so noticeable that it really looks cheap and distracting. There are also instances where they use live action footage and cardboards. I guess they didn't have time or money to animate those specific sequences. So in small words, this was an unredeemable juicy pile of hot shit. I'd strongly recommend you avoid this episode like the plague. Even if you're someone who doesn't like Trump for whatever reasons you have, you're better off watching something else that's better. It's not really worth putting up with something that has virtually no merit. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye for now.